So I am Giovanni. Uh, be talking to you a little bit about uh, VKD 3D shader and the HLSL compiler. Um, so who am I? I up to a, a couple of years ago, I was a mathematician uh, in the in the academia, and um, but I've always been in love with free, so free software since ever I knew about this concept. So I like the uh, wonderful idea of uh, having knowledge that is shared with others instead of being, uh, I mean, closed in some silo, uh, everybody has its own. And um, I've been contributing to the, Deb to the Debian project for a long time. Another thing I've always been in love with was uh, uh, making uh, things work in unexpected ways. So making, for example, some program uh, that was written for a certain operating system to work in some other place. You don't know if you know the concept. I mean, it's uh, what, for example, what Wine does, what Emulator does in a different way. Uh, there are many variations on this idea, and I found really, uh, really, uh, uh, I, I love this thing. Uh, so um, uh, when I, well, when I discovered about the Wine project, uh, and uh, uh, I, I always found a, a, a very cool idea. And uh, at some point, uh, uh, at uh, sorry, at some point, I started contributing, and then uh, um, nearly three years, years ago, now Fostem uh, 2020, uh, I wrote 2022, but that's of course wrong. Uh, I met some people uh, from the Wine project who were there. And and things started to go downhill from there. So lo and behold, uh, I, I uh, a few months later I was hired by Code Weavers, and uh, I did a bunch of different stuff. And at, at some point I um, did some decent amount of work on the HLSL compiler. Uh, and that's what I'm planning to speak about a little bit uh, today with you. Uh, little. Uh, a uh, little note of care. Um, there are probably a good amount of you uh, who know better than me what I'm speaking about. So if I ever say something stupid, that's not so unexpected. <sighs> so what is VKD3D? Uh, VKD3D is an implementation of Direct3D12 on top of Vulkan. So uh, it's uh, an, uh, uh, sort of what WindD3D does for uh, the early DirectX, uh, Direct3D versions, um, and uh, and again, on top of Vulkan, instead of on top of OpenGL, although now WineDirect3D Wine also supports uh, Vulkan. It is mostly developed by Codeweavers, with other people who are very welcome to contribute. And uh, of course, uh, it is what Wine uses uh, to give uh, uh, the application running inside Wine, uh, D3D12 dot dll implementation uh, also dxgi dot dll and d3d compiler dot dll at least for uh, uh, some parts uh, rely on, on vkd3d so the idea of having vkd3d as an independent thing uh, uh, is that you can actually use it without wine uh, so that's um, meant to be a tool that you can use for porting an application from, for example, from from Windows to Linux, uh, if for some reason you don't want to to uh, to take take on take on and bark the whole of Wine in your application, um, and uh, Direct 3D uh, 12 is the actual big stuff that is very intertwined with your application. The other is something that that you you can port by yourself. Uh, VKD 3D takes on the burden of uh, doing the Direct3D 12 part, you do the, the rest, uh, and you have ported your application to Wine, to, uh, to, Win, uh, to Linux, sorry, um, without ha having to actually uh, take on the whole of Wine. And the uh, licenses like Wine, LGPL 2.1, uh, and later versions. So inside VK33, there are a few different components. And the first one is the one I'll be concentrating uh, uh, about into in, in the rest of my talk, uh, but just to give a little bit of context, um, we have three main components: VKD3D shader uh, that uh, does uh, the, the operation of uh, shader compilation 
between different formats. We'll see uh, something more later. VKD3D that translate DirectD12 uh, calls uh, to Vulkan and uses VKD3D shader uh, when it is required to, uh, uh, to, to process a shader, to use a shader. And VKD, uh, VKD3D utils, which is uh, a much smaller library, which uh, uh, basically gives a few other uh, tools that helps, uh, um, I mean, this application porting uh, business I, 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 I just mentioned. Uh, this is not used by Wine, meaning that Wine also gives you what, what VKD3D utils implements, but uh, basically it's an independent implementation, although very similar. And so, as I said, ev uh, each of these components uh, depend on the on the ones that are above it, for reasons that I think are fairly are fairly obvious. So let's go to VKD3D shader. This is a quite a dense uh, slide, and let's see more or less what it's capable to do. Um, and then we'll concentrate on the HLSL compiler, which is basically one of the of the uh, bullet points on the on the on the right. So, uh, as I said, VK3D shader converts between different shader formats, and so on the left uh, I've listed a few of them, and mostly uh, those, those that are relevant to VK3D shader. So we have uh, Microsoft format, uh, and of course Microsoft. Uh, uh, as we know, always does things big. So there is, uh, there are at least three different formats, um, uh, which uh, have uh, uh, were developed uh, while, um, yeah, well, uh, graphics card uh, got more and more uh, features. So uh, what was initially uh, the, the, the the earliest formats at some point were not uh, um, able anymore to express uh, the additional. Uh, semantics that could be uh, processed by, by newer cards. So we have the, um, the first bytecode format that is, that is used for shader model 1 to 3. Shader models are these evolutions of basically what, what, what can ask a, um, a GPU to do. Um, at some point this got replaced with the, uh, what is usually called the XBC, but it's, uh, the XBC it's, is actually the name of the container and the, inside, uh, the, the, the thing that, that the actual program inside the container is in a format that is called TPF, that basically nobody calls with this name. And that's used for Shadow Model 4 and 5. And then there is uh, uh, the XIL, which is the, mm, the brand new thing. Well, maybe not that new anymore, but uh, it's the, the latest uh, one. And um, uh, it still uses the XBC container, but it's uh, the, the, the actual format uh, of the of the of the program is basically based uh, on a modified LLVM uh, uh, representation that's used for shader model six, um, except possibly for the really earliest uh, formats, um, you don't usually write write uh, shaders in bytecode format directly, uh, but you use uh, some uh, higher level uh, languages. And what Microsoft came up with is, is this, HLSL, that stands for uh, High Level Shading Language. Um, and it's basically a C-like thing uh, that then there is a compiler for and, this, and gets compiled to this SM1 to 6, depending on, on what you want. Um, then there are the formats on the other side of the fence. Um, Spear V, which is the, um, the bytecode format that you can use to give a shader to Vulkan, and GLSL, that is, I mean, so sort of corresponding source format uh, um, that is used, that is again a C-like language that you can use to write shaders for uh, OpenGL or through compilation to Spear V for Vulkan. Um, Apple has, of course, its own set. Of stuff because uh, why not? And uh, but uh, you see that is is in uh, is in is in brackets uh, uh, because for the moment we don't really care about it about it in VKD 3D shader. Uh, that that doesn't mean that it's not welcome. It can very well be uh, uh, something that we take we, we, we take contribution for. Uh, but for the moment we are not directly interested 
interested in, in doing development for, for metal. So what does actually VKD3D shader do? So the first line is uh, basically a disassembler. So you take a uh, shader model one or four uh, shader and you basically uh, convert it to a textual representation that it's very like, um, I mean, the, uh, ever, any assembler language that you have ever used with. There are registers and move, add, uh, multiply, and so on. Um, the second line, uh, SM4 to Spear V, is what uh, happens when VKD3D is actually running, it's actually receiving uh, um, uh, D3D, D3D12 commands and it, it wants to do some rendering. Since it has to call into a Vulkan implementation, Vulkan will definitely not like to receive uh, a Microsoft uh, uh, shader. And so uh, VKD3D asks VKD3D shader, please convert this Microsoft shader to Spear V, which is what my Vulkan implementation is willing to accept. And, and VKD3D, of course, uh, is happy to comply. The third line is what I called before the HLSL compiler. So usually uh, most programs and games uh, ship with their, uh, with their shaders already compiled to uh, to a bytecode format, um, but no, no, not not all of them do. Some actually uh, ask uh, uh, use the uh, D3D compiler uh, uh, library uh, and mm, give them um, an HLSL shader and want to uh, obtain uh, a bytecode shader uh, SM1, SM4. Um, of course, then that that that, that bytecode will be given back to VKD3D for actual rendering, but still we have to implement this, uh, this stage. And uh, yeah, as I said, that would be then the, 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 uh, the, the topic for the second half of this talk. Um, but I also would like to discuss uh, uh, some of the conversions that uh, uh, VKD3D shader cannot yet do but are um, going to appear, hopefully, in the next uh, months or years, who knows. Uh, so, um, SM1 to Spear V is the, the thing that is needed for the new Vulkan uh, uh, backend um, for Windy 3D. So, uh, right now, VK, uh, VKD3D shader um, implements only SM4 to Spear V because uh, when you're um, using DirectD 12, you cannot pass an a SM1 shader. They, they are too old to be used uh, for uh, recent uh, uh, DirectD versions. Uh, but if, if, if instead we, uh, I mean, Zeb will soon talk about uh, um, what, what, what's new in 1D3D, and one of the things uh, I can, wow. <laughs> Uh, anticipate you <laughs> is uh, uh, I mean the Vulkan backend and that needs instead to be able to accept also SM1 shaders so it will have to uh, to have this SM1 to Spear V uh, conversion that I think that I think Zebediah has already implementation for uh, somewhat apparently <laughs> the other thing is SM6 to Spear V uh, currently we don't support it uh, but uh, uh, I mean newer features in, in DirectD 12 will, like ray tracing and others, uh, require uh, us to be able to accept SM6 um, shaders. And Connor McCarthy is, is, is working on that. Uh, some, some of his uh, work is already public. I'll give you the link later. And so mm, as from what it, it tells me, it's not yet in a state in which it can actually run games, uh, but it can nearly run demos. And hopefully in a few months, uh, it will be, I mean, it, it, there, there will be some, some games that, that, that can take advantage f f of that and work. Um, another couple of conversions. Uh, are actually already implemented, but in Wine, not in VKD3D shader. And there is a, a general idea that should eventually move to VKD3D shader, uh, mostly because it's where all the other conversions are. 
and so that I mean they the, the, those can also be used uh, as independent uh, things if anybody has a, 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 ever has a, this uh, this this need. Um, the first two is the conversion of SM1 and SM4 shaders to GLSL, which is what Windy3D currently uses uh, uh, in, with uh, for its uh, 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 classical, let's say, OpenGL backend. And then there is also the, um, the possibility to actually assemble an SM1 shader, which is what I think you, um, I mean, used to be uh, the normal way to uh, to build a shader in the old days. Um, so I would like to concentrate now on the HLSL compiler, that is the third line of the um, right column, and uh, uh, which is the actual thing uh, I've been um, spending uh, um, some time on to for the last uh, more or less year. And uh, uh, I, uh, my my work on that is still uh, is not yet fully upstream, though nearly. Um, there are, there is also some work uh, by Zebedaya and Francisco that is ongoing, uh, and upstreaming work is ongoing too. Uh, but first, uh, time for a little pop quiz. So, if you had to take uh, uh, take a choice, would you think uh, that H HLSL is a, a nicely documented format with a good and extensive reference manual that is precise, that goes in depth uh, with a lot of examples that are coherent uh, with what the compiler actually does, or the other way around. So if you think that HLSL is well uh, documented with a lot of good examples, please raise your hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, it's more than I expected. It's well more than I expected. So somebody tried to propose that it could be worse. Um, okay, let's let's accept that. Uh, but of course, there is a lot of, of work that we have to do to reverse engineer uh, everything that is not uh, well well specified. Well, basically, I mean, I checked again to get to, to today, and basically, if you look for HLSL uh, on the Microsoft documentation thing. Basically, they say yes, it's a C-like, it's a C-like language, and here are a few examples of how to use it. Figure, figure the rest by yourself. Um, uh, so there was, uh, I mean, uh, as usual with Wine, there is a um, quite a deal of work uh, of reverse engineering on our side, and as usual, there is a, a, a lot of tests. That are used uh, to, uh, I mean, learn uh, about what the language actually does, and, uh, uh, and and check that our our work uh, is uh, is synchronized. Uh, sorry, want to check the time with uh, what the native library is is doing. So, if you actually want to use the uh, the the compiler, you have a couple of options. Um, the first one is uh, actually uh, VKD3D ships with a, a, a standalone program, which is called the v, uh, VKD3D compiler, which you can use uh, to uh, trivially do whatever any compiler does. That is, you give it a, a file, um, uh, which is your source code, and it will spit out either errors or a uh, compiled uh, uh, version of, uh, of, your, of your shader. And uh, I mean, we can have a look. I sorry, I have just one hand, and <laughs> I wrote the oh. And there it is. It's uh, writing out fix me, which uh, actually is harmless in this case. So uh, it, it should have compiled the, the shader correctly. And this fix me will eventually be solved uh, when the Bedias patches uh, uh, get in. Uh, but OK, this is not very funny. The much funnier thing is the, is the second line, because look, we have colors. <laughs> this is the um, disassembled uh, version of the shader that just got compiled 
so I'm 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 basically showing you a few of the of the of those arrows that were in a couple of sites ago. And so you might have the feeling that this code is not really optimized, and th that feeling might actually turn out to be uh, correct. Uh, you can see there are a lot, basically, of move. I, I think that uh, the, 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 the semantic of the, of the language are pretty transparent. Uh, of course, there are a lot of, of values that are usually moved back and forth between registers for no good reason, except that we haven't uh, written <laughs> better optimizations yet. And you can also notice this is completely not, not factorized. Um, I mean, the, 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 the assembler language supports vectorizing, I mean, doing more than one operation per line. Uh, but uh, uh, the conversion should be correct. I guess it's correct. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and that's the output. Um, of course, as I said, uh, uh, VK3D uh, shader also uh, uh, enables you to convert this um, uh, by Microsoft bytecode shader to Spear V uh, so that it can be fed to Vulkan. And we can have a look at that too. Okay, this is not very interesting, but in the end we can see what's in the, in the Spear V shader. And we have color again. And it, again, it's terribly not optimized. It's not really a problem if you think about it, because when when actual rendering is going to be uh, done with this shader, we'll actually pass it to another compiler that inside MIS or inside the NVIDIA driver, whatever. And we trust that they have actual optimizers that do their job. Uh, so, I mean, other than a little bit more of processing cycles, this is this is not expected to cause real problems once the shader is is executed uh, still it's it's in our plans to to get to do to do something better eventually okay and that was the fun part <laughs> um if you if you want to have additional insights of what's happening be, be, uh, inside of uh, the compiler there is the usual uh, environment variable that you can set to have a lot of a nice message in the in the log. So that was the first way to use uh, uh, to to actually compile shaders. There is another one that is the one that you use if you're actually writing a program that wants to compile shaders. And basically, the main uh, the main call exposed by VKD3D shader is VKD3D shader compile unexpectedly, and uh, it is sort of uh, based uh, on uh, uh, the, the the extensible structure thing that is that is used in Vulkan for those who are uh, I mean uh, used to that. So basically, there is I mean we, we assume we have a, a, a source code uh, in a in a in a in a car vector. Um, it's actually useful to go backwards. Uh, we create um, a, a structure of type VKD3D shader structure type compile info. Uh, we love to type a lot of uh, characters that basically has a reference to the source code and says what are, that the source type and target type of the compilation are. Since this is an um, HLSL uh, compiler invocation, we also have to give it a couple of satellite information like what is the entry point and what is the shader profile. And in the end, uh, we call a VKD3 shaded compiler, which will uh, magically do everything we want. Uh, if specifically we want to use the HLSL compiler, uh, there is a um, uh, we can we can go through the, the library that mentions be, me mentioned before, VKD3D utils, uh, which does uh, I mean it's a bit more uh, allows for a bit, bit shorter code uh, and takes basically all the all the uh, all the input stuff in a single call and uh, internally calls the, 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 the thing that I just showed you uh, a couple of slides ago. Um, so let's conclude uh, uh, by uh, mentioning uh, what is the HLS compiler uh, currently able to do and then I tell you what is still missing uh, and that, that's basically it. Uh, so what is, the, what is here? Well, uh, it's already something i mean it's it's able to actually um enable a few games we have a few games that are uh, that, that can work uh, with our um HL, hlsl shader compiler it does of course parsing and code generation for sm4 uh, in theory it also does sm1 but it's 
it's it's, it's less uh, uh, complete. Although Francisco is working a lot on that, um, it supports all the fundamental types uh, like scalars, vector, and matrices, uh, arrays, and structures. This is fairly working. It has basic uh, control flow, uh, so the usual stuff that you know from C. Um, uh, there are a number of uh, operations, arithmetic and logic, uh, and type conversion casts that are working. Uh, there is this vector swizzling thing that it doesn't exist in plain C, which basically uh, means that you can take a vector object and permute its components. Um, it supports uh, complex initializers, that is the funny thing uh, that in, in, in HLSL is even funnier uh, with uh, braces uh, that you can use to initialize, initialize a, a variable, uh, like a structure or array. Um, then the language has uh, the, the, the thing that, uh, that are called intrinsics that are basically some predefined functions that you can use, for example, to um, uh, yeah, I could have uh, actually sh um, showed you the, the code that was compiling, which is this one. So you see that it's rather C-like, and you see, for example, there are something like this mool that does matrix multiplication or normalize, that normalizes a vector. All these, of course, are not in, in plain C, but are available to, to the HLSL programmer. And uh, uh, um, our compiler is already able to handling a few of them uh, and others are upcoming. It can do uh, texture and, and sample texture, load from textures. Uh, again, it can already do something and something more is in the, in the pipe uh, for being uh, accepted. It implements the, the C preprocessor that, of course, you can use. Well, not of course, but you can actually use with uh, the HLSL compiler. And we already have uh, a few optimization passes, like that code, copy propagation, and constant folding uh, that are working. Uh, otherwise, it will be even worse, that, that compiled code. What's missing? Uh, we don't have function calls yes, yet. Uh, actually, uh, we, we won't implement actual function calls, but rather function inlining, but because that's what the native compiler does anyway. Um, we don't have what, I mean, not really advanced, but I mean, not basic flow control, um, like break continue and return. Some of these are, uh, are coming. Actually, return is basically part of functional inlining. Um, uh, we have still a lot of intrinsics and methods to implement. There is this uh, completely crazy th thing about function overloading, uh, uh, which, I mean, the language supports different C function overloading, but getting the details of that is a huge mess. Uh, of course, the documentation barely acknowledged that function overloading exists, and uh, um, we have, have, have no idea of what, because there is not, not just function overloading, but also implicit function parameter conversion. So you, if, if you have a lot of overloads, it's completely mm, not clear what is the overload to be, that, that can be chosen, considering that you can also implicitly convert uh, arguments. Uh, so, I mean, as far as you know, every time any of us had uh, tried to do something with, with function overloading, it has quickly backed up in horror. And hopefully, I don't know if I've ever found uh, a program that use function overloading in a shader. There might be a gentleman's agreement that this is just something people do not touch and <laughs> we can get away from that. But yeah, for example, for, for the moment it's completely missing. Um, and there, of course, there are usual bunch of detailed corner cases that we discover uh, while, while we do stuff. Though we have tried uh, to take a, a, a conservative approach, meaning that we try to make sure that if the compiler does not fail, it does not print any fix me, it doesn't return an error, it doesn't crash, then it returns a correct program. And I think more or less it, this, this works. And, um, and of course, another thing that has to be done is vectorization, as you may have noticed before. Uh, some of these things already happened in our development branch, in particular in the branch that we uh, put into Proton, and some are still to do. And of course, if you want to give a try, we are happy to receive your patches. And um, I mean, last few things, though, I mean, 
there is nothing really astonishing, astonishing here. We, uh, I mean, at, at, at the level of source code, we basically have a, a couple of uh, uh, um, flex and bison uh, thing to do uh, parsing, um, once for the preprocessor, once for the language. So, I mean, for who is not, uh, uh, who doesn't doesn't know the .l and .y files are uh, basically a um, standard way to convert um, um, a, a program in text format in a in a structured thing uh, uh, that can be later processed. And um, there is a, a HLSL code gen.c, which is basically where uh, a number of uh, yeah, lowering optimization paths happen, and where basically the program, the parsed program, is prepared for being uh, uh, from being passed to the actual code generators that are different from shader model one or four. Then there are the code generator for uh, shader model one or four, and HLSL.c contains a lot of miscellaneous stuff that is just used everywhere else. Um, if you want to have a look at the sources, or even better, to uh, contribute, um, you find links to the uh, upstream repository, which is where uh, I mean we're, we just released version version 1.5, and uh, where the actual development goes on and patch submission is it happens. Um, you can have a look, especially if you want to run games with it. You can have a look at the uh, branch that we're cur currently shipping in Proton. Um, which is basically upstream plus uh, the patches that we are still uh, the, most of them are actually relative ready to be upstream they just take a, a, some time to 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 do the the revision uh, but i mean basically what is in the proton branch is what we will be upstream shortly and then there is uh, connor's preliminary work on the xil that he already um, uh, made public on uh, on that on that branch again in in Wine's GitLab. Um, that's all I had to do. I'm happy to take questions if there are any. Yeah. Uh, so the question if if there is something to compile to us SM6, and the answer is that no, we're not uh, working on that right now. Uh, also because there, Microsoft has an open source uh, a free software compiler for that. Um, so we're, so it's, I mean, it's, uh, mm, if, uh? There's two things. First, the uh, application is usually just shipped by code, so that's not it. And second, you can actually ship the uh, Microsoft. Yeah, as, as Henry noted, not, notice, uh, usually applications uh, just ship the compiled bytecode. And furthermore, they can ship the compiler. Actually, they can also ship Microsoft's compiler. I mean, Microsoft D3D compiler.dll. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, but again, there, it, it, it's not a priority, uh, mostly because if it ever becomes something that we want, uh, uh, we are probably willing to take the, the Microsoft version that is already free software. Yeah. So the question is if Connor is using the uh, the um, the XIL um, project by Hans Christian Arnsen, and I guess the answer is no or yes, you know, I I haven't part of it. Okay, I'm not confident. I I do not know a lot of that. He's he's recently, I mean, he's recently, he's recently came to a, a a point where things are starting to work. Yeah. Uh, okay, the question is about relative performance between VK3D shader compiler and Windows. Uh, do you mean performance and how quick the compiler is at compiling or how quick the shader is uh, at while, while rendering? The okay, the second one, uh, I don't know and it's something that is very dif difficult to benchmark anyway because uh, they're going to 
in principle, completely different implementations anyway. So the, comp the shader that we compile uh, will be, again, recompiled, uh, I don't know how many times, but def definitely more than one uh, by the backend uh, uh, driver implementation. And so it's not clear what to compare. It's, I mean, it, uh, it, it is part of the more general uh, question on whether the, 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 the whole VKD3D implementation is more or less uh, performant than a, than a driver than Windows drivers, and again, it, it also depends on the Vulkan driver, so you really get to decide what you want to really compare. I, and I don't know of anything, I mean, any specific uh, uh, systematic answer to this, to this question. So uh, the question is about what is the reason why we don't care too much about metal shading language, and I, uh, there are. I think that the main uh, answer is that uh, our right now our plan to use uh, um, uh, to support Apple devices is through Molten VK. So we're basically treating it as an as a Vulkan implementation, and then the conversion between Vulkan shaders and what and and the act, the shaders that uh, the the Apple driver actually needs is the job of Molten VK. Uh, I don't know if there's any other specific, specific thing to comment on that. But again, as I said, it's not necessarily something that we don't want to have. And uh, I mean, it might, uh, e even the question whether we want uh, VK3 backend uh, that directly uh, renders to Metal instead of passing through Molten VK is a question that can be I mean, it, 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 it is something that could be done, though, and, and maybe there was also some prototype at some point. No, no, not, okay, not for, for earlier versions, yes. Uh, but for the moment, it's, it's not where we are concentrating development. Yes, it's, MSL is a source language. So the question is, if we wanted to to um, go directly through Metal, would we use that um, source code? The answer is that, I don't know, I mean, it, everything should be engineered from scratch at, at that point. Metal also has an, an, a, a bytecode version. I don't know if it's specified, if it's, it has public specification. So, I mean, it, nothing is known about that. It's too hypothetical to have an answer. It's not, it's not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's an LLV LLVM based thing, uh, but it's, it's not public or specified. Okay, so again, for the benefit of the stream, um, MSL is a, basically based on C++ and it gets compiled to something based on LLVM, but all, the, all these steps are, are, meant, um, are proprietary and not, not reverse engineered. By the way, anyway, the idea to compile uh, to um, a source, uh, source level uh, format is what WND3D is currently doing with OpenGL when, uh, anyway, so it's, it's not unheard of and it works. I don't know if, I mean, one, one could argue that it's less efficient, probably not relevantly, I mean. Any other question? Yeah, I think that time is up anyway. Yeah, if, if somebody comes up with something. Well, if people could talk afterwards. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you a lot. <laughs>